So a third possible ground of political obligation is fairness. This kind of theory attempts to ground political obligation in something about fairness. We can provide a precise statement of such a theory as follows. Citizens are a part of cooperative enterprises that are mutually beneficial and fair. Because they're part of such schemes, such enterprises, they have an obligation to obey the rules of those schemes or enterprises. So that's quite abstract. Let me make it less abstract by giving you an example. We can think of this kind of theory on the model of a washing up scheme. Suppose you live in a house with six other people and each person does the washing up on an appointed day of the week. It's now Sunday, your day for doing the washing up. You have an obligation to do the washing up. Why is that? Well, what's the ground of that obligation? It's because you're part of a fair scheme of cooperation and doing the washing up is necessary to play your part in that scheme and to assure its continuation. The fairness theory of political obligation gives an analogous account of how we can have an obligation to obey the law. This kind of theory has some similarities to the benefit theory that we considered earlier. Where it differs is that the fairness theory only applies to benefits that are delivered through mutually beneficial cooperative schemes. This difference means that the theory can explain why we don't have an obligation to obey corrupt or unjust states, even if such states happen to benefit us. We lack an obligation in such cases precisely because such states are not fair, just, cooperative schemes. So what weaknesses are there in the fairness theory? What grounds might we give for rejecting it? Here are two. The first is that when one's part of a fair cooperative venture that generates obligations, one has typically voluntarily joined that scheme. In the case of the washing up scheme, you consented to being part of that scheme for distributing the washing up. But states are not like this at all. We're born into states and have no choice whether or not we're part of them. And as we saw earlier in connection with consent theories, we're limited in our ability to leave the state. And that makes another difference with the washing up scheme. Thus a real worry for this fairness theory of political obligation is that it's inapplicable in the case of states, where this is because obligation generating cooperative schemes are things that one must actively join, whereas one automatically becomes a member of a state at birth. So far, we've briefly considered three of the main accounts of how the problem of political obligation can be solved. None of these theories has been decisively rejected. Each has its merits and could mount replies to the objections that we've thought about. And there are other theories of political obligation out there that we should consider. But nevertheless, in the next part of the lecture, I want to explain what would happen, what would follow, if no theory of political obligation were correct, or what would happen if the problem of political obligation cannot be solved.